Hey guys, it's Bev. Today I wanted to talk to you about LinkedIn. You know, LinkedIn has been one of the best lead generation tools I've had in my business, but I think there are a couple of things that were kind of taught by the LinkedIn experts and the LinkedIn trainers that sound brilliant in theory, but didn't work for me in practice. Now, I'm not a LinkedIn expert, I'm not a marketing expert, but I did build my training business off the back of LinkedIn. And I can honestly say around about 80% of all of my business for the last six years in the corporate wellness space came directly to me through LinkedIn. And I never ever paid for LinkedIn advertising and I never paid for LinkedIn premium really. I think I did once and it didn't really work. But there are three things that I think we're often taught that make sense on the surface, but I found that they didn't work and when I stopped doing them, made a big difference to my lead generation, my conversions and therefore sales. Ultimately, I made more money. So I wanted to share what they are today. And as I say, I'm not coming at this as a LinkedIn expert, <laughs> keep doing that, as a LinkedIn expert. I'm coming at it from the point of view of a tried and tested marketing strategy from someone who's had a business or has a business and generated, as I say, 80% of my leads from LinkedIn using the strategy that I, that I use. So the first thing that I think we are told that could be killing your lead generation is the idea of sending a personalized message with a connection request. Now on the surface, it makes sense to do that because we want to build relationships, we want to be personable, it seems like the courteous and well-mannered thing to do. But the problem is, most of us, if you ask us, don't like getting DMs into our LinkedIn inbox because we know, <laughs> we, we know that most people are on LinkedIn to sell. Um, there's, there's really only two reasons, I think, why you're on LinkedIn. One is for career development and the other is to build your business. And more and more businesses now are doing business, that's a lot of business, on LinkedIn. And that's fine. I, you know, I totally get that. That's what I do. It, oh, just smack my microphone. That's what I do. And I can't see the problem with it. But everybody I've spoken to, I have a, a membership called the Working With Corporates Project. And I asked the question in my membership, who likes getting DMs into their LinkedIn inbox from random connections, you know, people you've never met before. I will caveat that what I'm talking about here is connecting with people that you haven't already met, either virtually or in person, okay? So this is kind of cold outreach. And every single one of the people I asked said they don't like it. They fundamentally don't like having somebody drop into their DMs because they know, you know, they're going to try and sell to them. And yet when I suggested that we don't do that, that we just send a connection request without any personalized message, I got pushback because they'd been taught by LinkedIn experts that they should send a personalized message. Now, there, there are a number of reasons why I chose not to do this. One was practical. It takes a lot of time to send personalized messages to everybody that you connect with. And I didn't want to be spending a lot of time trying to think of a way to send a personalized message to somebody that didn't sound salesy and spammy and wasn't a veiled attempt to hide the fact that I was connecting with them because they were my ideal clients. And I think no matter how innocuous a message is that comes into your DMs, it never sounds sincere. Even if it's meant sincerely, it never sounds sincere. <laughs> so I didn't want the hassle of having to try and make my personalized messages sound sincere when I knew from a place of integrity that 
I was connecting with that person because ultimately I felt that I had something that would benefit them and I wanted to do business with them. Now, there's nothing wrong with selling. There's nothing wrong at all with selling a product or a service that is going to help your client. But we all love to buy, but nobody loves to be sold to. And I just feel that that personalized message, no matter how hard we try, feels like a sales message. So that was one of the reasons why I didn't like it. But the other reason is it's a psychology thing, really. If I hate getting messages directly into my inbox, and I'll tell you why I don't like it in a moment, then surely other people are likely to be the same. And if they're, if they're the same and they don't like it, then why would I potentially pay off my potential clients before I've even had a chance to build a relationship with them. Now let me tell you why I don't like having DMs drop into my inbox, other than the fact that they often feel a bit salesy and spammy. The first one is because it interrupts me. So if I hear a ping on my LinkedIn, I get that dopamine hit because I have ADHD. Um, I think we all get that dopamine hit. I don't think it's an ADHD thing alone. But I want to see that message. I want to see whatever it is. So when I look and I see it's from a stranger, I feel like they've interrupted me on their terms and not mine. And it makes me feel a bit resentful. But more so than that, I was brought up to be polite and courteous. So if somebody speaks to me, I feel obliged to speak back, to reply. And I don't want to. And that makes me feel uncomfortable and again it makes me feel a bit resentful so there's two reasons there that i don't like it i have got better at this now if if i get unsolicited messages now i will ignore them but it's taken me a long time to feel comfortable ignoring them because my natural so people please a tendency and my, my upbringing to be polite and courteous has left me feeling a lot of the time like i'm being rude um, and I've had to work on feeling not rude for not responding. So if I'm going to feel fed up and interrupted and resentful, I'm not going to do that to my potential clients. So I think that's a bit of rubbish advice. And I think what works far better is to have your LinkedIn profile optimized really, really well so that anybody that uh, you connect with and I'm not saying don't connect with people. I send out probably 10 to 12, 15 connection requests a day, strategic connection requests, but I just send the connection requests. I don't send any message and I don't inbox them as soon as they connect with me. I let my profile do the talking for me. So I have an optimized profile that shows exactly who I am and what I do. And I leave it up to the individual that I've connected with to make a decision about whether or not they want to connect with me. Interestingly, when I get connection requests now, I've started to play a bit of a game whereby I will accept the connection request, look at my watch and see how long it takes before I get a spammy message into my uh, DMs. And I have to say, most of the time, it's within minutes and it just annoys me so much if somebody dives straight in you know unless the message is look I'm reaching out to connect with you because I'm interested in what you do and I would like to have a conversation about working with you completely different you know I mean at the end of the day I'm not going to turn down the potential for a sales conversation but if it's you know when it's just somebody connecting with me because they want to sell to me. It's funny, I count the minutes and it, it is normally just minutes. That has been absolutely my experience that just sending a connection request without any kind of personalized message and letting my optimized LinkedIn page do the talking for me works brilliantly. So I was hoping to do a walk and talk, but the weather's just turned and it's not very nice out there. It's very windy and it's kind of starting to rain. So forgive the way I look, I've just literally come out of the gym. The second area that I think the LinkedIn experts get wrong is they tell us that we have to be quite serious and business-like on LinkedIn because it's a business platform. And I, it is, 
it is a business platform, it's a business networking platform. I would argue it is the best business networking platform out there. But the idea that we have to be very serious and business-like all of the time and not post anything funny or silly or anything that kind of shows our quirkiness or our personality is fundamentally flawed and I've seen posts on LinkedIn that really wind me up you know somebody will post something and in the comments they'll get a comment saying this shouldn't be on LinkedIn it's not Facebook I think no it's not Facebook but surely we don't have to be all serious all of the time I think we have to remember that a business is an entity, but behind every business there are real live human beings and human beings are social animals. And LinkedIn is a social platform. So whether you're sort of there for business or even if you are there looking for career development, I think it's still important that we allow our personality to show through. And the reason I think this is so true is because I know that in the past when I've been approached by somebody wanting to work with me a lot of the time the feedback I've had has come back that they've been following me they like my personality and they want to work with me because they feel like they know me and if you're always putting on this very very serious business-like front all of the time then you're not being your authentic self. And I think when you're not being your authentic self, people don't buy into you. The people that wanted to work with me and reached out to me already kind of got a feel for what it would be like to work with me. And they'd made the decision that they liked what they saw. And that for me is really, really important in business. It's about relationships. So if you're never ever showing your real self, then that that relationship is never gonna get off to a great start. In my six years of experience, working with some amazing clients that have reached out to me directly from LinkedIn, I fundamentally disagree with the idea that we have to be overly serious. Okay, just as I'm heading home, let me give you my third bit of advice that I think is fundamentally flawed that we keep getting taught by the, uh, the LinkedIn experts out there. And that is that posting once or twice a week is enough. Now, I've had a few people teach me this I've been on a few LinkedIn trainings where they've said you know you don't have to get bogged down posting every day once or twice a week is going to be quite enough and the problem is with that it's rubbish <laughs> if I'm honest now granted once or twice a week is better than once or twice a month and once or twice a month is better than once or twice a year but in all honesty once or twice a week is barely going to get you noticed if this is your business marketing strategy you've got to be seen you've got to be visible you've got to get noticed and you've got to be seen regularly so to me <clears throat> the idea of posting once or twice a week just isn't going to be enough to get you seen the chances are that most of the people that you're connected with on LinkedIn aren't going to see all of your posts and the more people you connect with and the more followers you have then you know the, the more diluted your posts are going to be they're not going to reach as many of the people that you're connected to and if you're only posting twice a week unless you're very lucky and the people who you want to see your stuff are online when you post they are going to get to see it now to be fair the, the longevity of a post on linkedin is is better than on many platforms probably with the exception of this one YouTube but even then it's it, they don't have a very long lifespan so if you're only posting a couple of times a week the chances of you getting seen are very very slim what I found was that I needed to be posting every day and for the first four years of my business I posted every single day seven days a week as I say for four years and I was able to steadily build my business on LinkedIn and actually that was through the pandemic as well I think where people start to get sort of bogged down by this posting every day is they think it's going to take up a huge amount of time but it doesn't have to LinkedIn now has its own native scheduling tool I used to use things like Buffer or Hootsuite and I don't think LinkedIn ever really liked them I'm not a great one for scheduling posts anyway but now that LinkedIn has its own inbuilt scheduler, 
There's no reason why you can't schedule maybe three or four posts a week. Um, and all you have to do is really, th these are great for your educational and informational type posts. So the, the ones that are evergreen that, you know, they're not reliant on the moment. The, the posts that talk about the stuff that you teach or the stuff that you deliver. Those educational, informational type posts are very easy to batch create and post out through the scheduling tool. And that takes up four, maybe three or four of your days. Then all you're left with is maybe three or four days where you want to be posting something spontaneous. And these are great because this is where you get to post the personality type posts or the inspirational posts, you know, maybe a case study or a testimonial or a picture of where you're working that day. You can put stuff that's kind of that, sorry, that's my car keys rattling. You can put um, sort of behind the scenes type stuff. A great way to think about content is like, just have a look around you or think about, you know, think back over the last 24 or 48 hours and think, what have you seen or what have you heard or what have you read or what have you listened to that has picked your attention and you could create a post out of it. Ooh, traffic's a bit busy there. I always teach the members of my Working With Corporates program when they're looking at LinkedIn and they're feeling a bit overwhelmed by the content and it feels like it's taking up too much time. I would say if it takes you more than five minutes, probably 10 minutes maximum to write a post, you're overthinking it. So you don't have to make it all polished. You don't have to have beautiful videography um, you know, beautiful production quality. You don't have to be going on to Canva and creating fabulous graphics. You literally just need to pick your phone up and take a selfie. I would always try and put some sort of imagery with your post just because I think it helps people to stop scrolling. It catches people's attention. But a selfie with your camera or picking up your camera and just taking a short bit of vertical video LinkedIn's just started doing sort of shorts and, and, and reels style video in vertical form. You can create a video post in less than two minutes. And we've all got two minutes somewhere in the day that we can post onto LinkedIn. So I fundamentally disagree that you can really do anything worthwhile from a marketing perspective with two posts a week on LinkedIn. Ideally, I think you could be posting more than once a day on LinkedIn. I think I've posted three times today and I don't worry that I'm bombarding people because I say the chances of people seeing it aren't that great, you know? So I'm giving people the chance to see my posts more often by posting more often. Wait for the beep. There she is. So there you go. They are my three bits of LinkedIn advice that I think are flawed. These are just my experiences. Let me know what you think. And let me know if you use LinkedIn. You know, not everybody uses LinkedIn, but if you're trying to build a business, even if you're using YouTube as your main content platform, I think YouTube and LinkedIn go brilliantly well together um, as a synergistic match, if you like, for your content. So you can cross promote your, your YouTube content onto LinkedIn. But let me know what you think. And if you found this at all helpful, if you found it interesting, I'd love to give me a like and possibly uh, hit the subscribe button so you can find out future stuff that I'm putting out here. I do talk about being a Gen X entrepreneur. I talk about having ADHD as an entrepreneur. And I do talk an awful lot about business as well. So I hope you've enjoyed it and I will talk to you all very soon.